All right, so now let's talk a little bit about implementing eventual consistency. A client, there's a couple ways to implement eventual consistency. I mean, one is you can just try to live with it, um, you know, and where things are just a little bit out of state. And I talked about the apology-based computing before, where it turns out that even if you work very hard to keep your data consistent, it may turn out that it's not really the truth of the data anyway. The physical world is actually the truth. So one way to implement eventual consistency, where you have a, one object being stored somewhere in some database, another object being stored in another database, and you want to form that relationship between them, right, in a, in a consistent fashion. So you could say that I have object A, and it refers to object B. And you might also say that object B ref, wants to refer back to object A, right? The, the typical example is a customer, I need to record this customer place this order. And if I happen to be looking at this order, I want to know which customer placed that order, right? So I have this dependency back and forth. So let's say we go and add the order to the orders table first, and then later we're going to update the customer table to add in the new order. But there's a race condition there, right? There's a delay of time that happens in there. And a client is coming up, a customer is coming up to your website, and they're saying, I want to see all of the orders that I've placed for myself. Well, what you could do is the client could go and read both entities, the customer information and the order information. And it could be that the order information is not there yet, right? But the customer information is there. So if A references B, so the customer record says, we have this order. But then you go to the orders table, and it's not there yet. So then you could say to the customer, we're still processing that order. We, I can't show you the information about it right now. So you're not showing them inconsistent data, right? You're saying, I don't have that data to show you. The relationship hasn't been formed yet. And you could say to the customer, you know, try again in five minutes, and then hopefully the relationship will fix itself. So if A references B, but B doesn't reference A yet, then the client code, the client code in this case, can assume that the relationship does not exist yet and can say there is no relationship between these two things. And then later, you can ask again, and if A references B and B does reference A, then you can say this relationship is fully consistent now, right? They reference each other, all is good, and then you can return back to the client and say this is what the truth now reports. Another thing that you can do to ensure that these different operations get done, ultimately or eventually get done, is you can use fault tolerant message queues, which we talked about in the course, and you can use another pattern, which is called the saga pattern. This saga pattern, which I'll walk you through in just a moment, it guarantees that all operations eventually complete. Uh, now, what the, how the saga pattern does this is it's a pattern that is compromising atomicity. So we're not updating these two records as an atomic unit. We're updating one, and then later we're going to update the other one. So we're compromising the atomicity, um, but in order to give you greater availability. right? So let's say one of the services is down. So you update one thing, and you can't update the other thing. So we want to eventually update this other thing, and we want to guarantee that this other thing does eventually get updated. The Sager pattern, when used with something like a message queue, can guarantee that this will eventually happen. So even though you've lost some availability now, you're going to eventually make it happen, but you're compromising the atomicity of it. All right, so um, I will go through the Saga pattern, uh, and then you will see exactly how this works.